This class, on the energetics of herbs, I call the 10 tastes. You really want to understand what you're doing. You really want to match the herbs to the person. Remember, we talked about this. It is more important to know what or the person that has the disease than what disease the person has. In Chinese medicine, energetics is determined by taste. And it's really handy, and I'll tell you why it's handy. Unless you have a nosmia, the lack of sense of smell, which means you also have no sense of taste generally, or unless you have some kind of major nerve damage and you can't taste anything, wherever you go, your taste buds go with you. In my system, there are 10 tastes. Sweet, mineral salt, true salt, pungent, spicy, acrid, sour, astringent, bitter, and bland. In every case, these things, things that are sweet, have an effect on certain organs in the body. A little bit is good. Too much is always a problem. Sweet things are nourishing. They are nutritive. Generally, they are caloric. The sweetest herb that most people here probably know of is licorice. Sweet things are incredibly important as nutritive tonics. Salty is now divided into the mineral salt taste and what I call the true salt taste. True salt is the taste of table salt. Cleavers, it includes things like horsetail, it includes nettles. Pungent herbs include cayenne pepper, ginger, and prickly ash. Spicy things are almost everything in your spice cabinet except cream of tartar. Rosemary, and oregano, and thyme. Acrid herbs is not as much as a taste. When you have something acrid, it's, there's a sensation, and it irritates your mouth. Black cohosh, blue cohosh, lobelia. So we have sour, and we have astringent. Lemons, vinegar, one of the reasons people often drink things like orange juice, which is sweet and sour, or grapefruit juice in the morning, is it stimulates your gallbladder, releasing bile, which of course is the digestive fluid necessary for emulsifying and digesting fats, and Americans tend to, among other things, eat a pretty high fat diet. Wild blueberries, elderberries, etc., which are really quite sour. Stringence is everything from oak bark to bayberry bark, to uh, witch hazel. These herbs bind minerals. They can also easily cause constipation because they're very drying. The most bitter thing that the average American consumes, two things, coffee, all right, and the other would be beer. And while American beers are, got, are much better than they used to be, um, certainly, um, it, it's still uncommon for Americans to drink the really bitter beers, the kind of things, the stouts and things that you tend to find more in Europe. Bitter is the most pharmacologically active taste we have. Some example of alkaloidal bitters would be golden seal and other berberine containing herbs such as coptis and things like um, a barberry bark. Non-alkaloidal bitters, gentian, artichoke leaf, chicory, Fragrant bitters are the nastiest tasting herbs in the world. And half an hour after you ate it, it comes wafting back up your throat. You know, most bitters, the vast majority of bitters, they're bitter going in, they're bitter going down, and if you had what I call tertiary taste buds, they'd be bitter going out. Wormwood. Mmm. Elecampane. And there's always one person in every class that raises their hand and goes, but I like elecampane. There's something pathological if you like elecampane. Herbs that are bland and slippery are cool and damp, and this includes, you know, slippery elm, marshmallow. When we have a situation where we have a person who is unhealthy, what we are trying to do is to bring them back to balance. If we have a person that has a cold, damp condition, they're here. What we want to do is to bring them back to here. Yin becomes yang if you don't treat it right. As simple as this is, and this really actually is really simple, I hope that you're going to take this and work with it and get to know it and use it and make it yours.